Hi there, my name is Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today is another Trying to Fix video and this is the video with two Nintendo Switch lights. So what I'm going to do is to make them a tiny bit shorter I'm just going to be doing one switch per video because it could take me a long long time to fix them. If the same problem is on both of them then obviously I can combine it into one video. So apparently the eBay listing says that they're working but there's nothing displaying on screen. So basically you can hear the touch screen and sounds and stuff working but nothing's actually happening. So let's uh, let's see what's happening. Now I spent £200, so it's £100 on each switch light. So they certainly weren't cheap. Now I haven't looked at them yet. Let's turn them both on and let's see what's happening. I'm also going to get a charger and a, a USB thing as well and see if they are drawing any power. Right, let's see if I can hear anything. Excellent. Switch is definitely working but obviously it's not displaying anything. Excellent. Right, so that's working as well. Just let's make sure it is actually charging up. So if this was a normal switch, it wouldn't be such a big deal because you could probably play it in docked mode, but with these ones here, the switch lights, so you can't play them in dock mode. Right, that's good. So it's drawing. That battery is probably already full, but it is definitely drawing. I'm just gonna turn it around the other way. Yep, yeah, fine, and let's do the same on this one here. Yeah, so that battery must be more empty because you see it's charging at a higher amount. Brilliant, okay, so it is definitely just a screen problem. Now, if it is a screen problem itself, then they are currently, what are they, 60, they're 60 pound, 58 pound to get from the UK. You can get them cheaper from China. Is it gonna be an expensive fix if it is the screen itself? But maybe it might be something else. Just looking at here, there's a crack on this one here. And the yellow one I did before had a crack in exactly the same place, which is strange why they're cracking there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold it down because I can't see what's going on. And I'm just gonna shut them both down and uh, let's take one apart. I think I'm going to work with this turquoise one here and then if I find out what the problem is I can quickly have a look at this if not that will be done on a different video so let's get this thing apart now when I was trying to fix the yellow one earlier on this week when I put my switch together, it did exactly the same problem. And I couldn't find out what it was, but then just by taking things apart and putting them back together again a couple of times, it started working. So I'm thinking the link cable that goes from here to the edge, because the backlight of this is fed to the edge here. So I'm thinking that link cable might be faulty. Or it might have been knocked out of place. Here we go. Well, I'm just gonna have a very close look at this cable here with my eye loop. It's, uh, it's okay, I'm gonna zoom in. I'm sure it's not gonna be this, but it looks like it's ever so slightly, I'm talking about a fraction of a millimeter this way. I think I can see more contacts there than there. What I'm wondering is if it was to be dropped because it has got a little crack in it here, I wonder whether that would be enough to dislodge this a little bit because this is a separate board. Let me zoom in and see what you think. So if you have a look here, so basically this is the edge of it here, yeah? Port over here and we're talking about this one here. Look, is it just me or does it look like it's fallen down this way a little bit? So I'm not gonna undo the ribbon cable or anything yet. I'm just gonna, uh, I mean, undo the uh, battery connector. I'm just gonna lift this up. And, uh, oh, hold on. Let me have a look, those contacts look weird. Let me have a look again. Those contacts look burnt. They don't look right. Let me undo this. Let 
Yeah. Right, remember now this cable is still live. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out. I am going to disconnect the battery. So I'm going to take off this metal shield. And let's have a close look here and see what's happening. That definitely doesn't look... Definitely doesn't look right. This will give me a chance to inspect the ribbon cables going off to the screen as well. Does that look like a bit of water damage there? Or not? Oh, there you go, water damage. See the indicator here? Yeah, so this has been water damaged. Yeah, and I can see corrosion on this bit here. I have to strip this down and uh, find out exactly what's going on with the uh, with the board. Right, so I'm going to reach in under here and I'm going to disconnect the battery. There we go. That's it. So I suppose I could. I mean, the thing is, the switch is working, which is great because normally on water damage, you're in for a whole heap of hassle. But if it is just the fact that it's not displaying, maybe it's to do with the backlight. So I can see corrosion here, and then the backlight connector is here, so it must travel from this board down here into here, unless there's something on this board that deals with the backlight, but I don't think so. I reckon this is just like a pass-through. In fact, let me see if I can have a look at the connections from this backlight. Here we go, there's water damage on them as well, I think. And water damage there. Okay, let me zoom in and show you, but yeah, the tracks do go from here down to here, but let me zoom in. It looks like there's something wrong with a tiny little capacitor there. I'm sure that wouldn't cause the problem. You have a look here. Can you see we've got water damage here? It looks like whatever this component is here, which looks like a tiny capacitor, then uh, that looks like it's blown. But I don't think that might be just to like, clean up the signal a bit. So I don't think that would cause it not to work. But as well, and you can see corrosion on that particular pin there. So let's lift up this one. Let's take this out, see if the cable itself looks all right. Tiny bit, isn't there? There's a tiny bit there. Right, so I think what we have to do is, I think we're going to have to strip this down and give it a really good clean. Maybe it hasn't been cleaned properly. You know what I mean? It might have just come in and the uh, person might have just sold it straight away without attempting to, to clean it. So let's strip this down completely. There's tiny little bits of evidence everywhere. So if you have a look on the bottom of that connector there, you can see just a little bit of corrosion. And on the bottom of the power switch here, again, you can just see, uh, you know, like corrosion around the place. And again under there as well. But it doesn't look terrible. It doesn't look awful. Maybe I could just swap this board out here and then prove the fault, and then I could just work on this. But it's just that because there's corrosion here, I want to check the other side of the board as well, because even if I was to get it working by just swapping this out, in a few days' time or weeks' time, something else may, you know, might fail if there's already uh, corrosion on this side here. Yeah, and evidence of corrosion has gone right the way up to here as well. this chip as well you can see it and around the screen connector yeah, and on the actual ribbon cable for the screen connector as well so although it didn't look bad it has actually gone quite far right, here we go let's see what the other side looks like Yeah, unfortunately, do you know what it is everywhere? Yeah, it's all around the it's all around the chips. You can just see 
I'm just hoping it hasn't been cleaned. See, it's not that bad, but it is still everywhere. But if it hasn't been cleaned, then even up here, you see, if it hasn't been cleaned, then it's not awful. But if you have a look at that capacitor now, you can see that one side of it is completely dull. So look, that side on the right is shiny, but that side there is completely dull. Yeah. So although it sounds like it's working, and it is working, there might be, for example, does Wi-Fi work? You know, does uh, there, there might be loads of things like does the NFC thing work? Uh, who knows? But all I can do is give it a really good clean, and then take it from there. Again, the capacitors here look like they're gone. Well, not gone, but they're very badly, very badly uh, dulled. We get IPA and a flux brush. And I'm going to give everything a really, really good clean. So isopropyl alcohol, 99.9%. Let's get going. in there on the screen connector look in the middle there it's completely gone now I don't remember looking at another board and seeing one missing but it definitely looks black around this area I wonder if it's just burnt away completely so even if I get for example a backlight on uh, even if I was to get the backlight to work there might be a whole row that's missing you know Row of pixels or something, I don't know. Okay, so that's cleaned up. Uh, but obviously, there could still be loads of corrosion under the chips and stuff. Remember, I still don't know if it was previously cleaned or not. But if it wasn't, it's definitely not the worst corrosion I've ever seen. So now, what I'm going to do is I just want to see here because that corrosion. I just want to see if it's eaten through the trace. So let's zoom right in. Zoom with the little sideboard here, you know, the little controller sideboard. And if you have a look, this is where the ribbon cable goes. It goes up here. Now look at the one on the right hand side. Can you see there? It's completely burnt away. So originally, I think there probably would have been a capacitor there. That's not there anymore. Also, well, the next one up is going to be the power cable, isn't it? And we know it's definitely turning on. And it appears to be turning off as well. So maybe I'm not so worried about this, this sort of corrosion here. Let's just see if this trace is actually going through. So I've got my meter set to continuity. And I'm just going to go down to uh, this one down here. These ones here. Now let's see if they're going up. I'm not sure if that's getting through. I'll just try the other ones. That's the second one. I'm wondering if the board's gone gone through there. See, I don't know where that's. I don't know where that connects to. Let's zoom out a little bit. So that's the first one. That's the second. That looks like ground. So that's going to be there. So this one here isn't a ground. So that must be connecting to one of the other ones, but it's not. Okay, let's try to scrape that little bit back there. And uh, imagine if it was just that, because that would pro that could well stop the backlight from working if the trace is cut, couldn't it?
Right, so we're there. Yeah, there's nothing happening. So basically there's a break here, isn't there? And there should be continuation right the way through, but it's not. Right, I'm going to get... Do you know what? I'm going to get a fiberglass pen. I'm going to scrape that area back on. Now, actually, I'm not going to use a fiberglass pen because I'll end up scraping everything back. I'm just going to scrape across it completely now because I'm, I'm convinced that there's a break here. Yeah, 100% there's a break there. There is a break just across here, just there. I'm just going to clean this bit up a bit more. Right, so that's where the path has gone, you see. So what I need to do is put a tiny bit of cable, a tiny bit of wire to jump at that. I'm not going to worry about that capacitor just yet because I think that's just to filter out a little bit. Can you see there? There's nothing happening. So look, we've got continuity there and we've got it here, there, but not between there and there. Let's join up that and then if it's all working, maybe, I mean, I'm not going to have capacitors. I'm sure I haven't got them that small. I can't remember now what, what the smallest size is, but I think it would work without that. I think that's just to clean it up a little bit. Right, let's jump at that. I'm going to use a tiny little bit of flux, and then I'm going to try to get some solder on the tracks. Right, this is a little bit on the big side, my uh, tip on the solder. Let's just see if I can get any on there. Right, I'm going to change my tip over. Right, I've got a smaller tip now, so this should be better. Oh, this should be soldered on that now, so let's get some little enamelled wire. And I'm just going to try to tin this up. This stuff here should be thick enough. So by putting the soldering iron up and down it, it should burn off the outside, the, uh, the, other, the outer insulation, the enamel. Add a little bit more flux, I've just cleaned it as well. Trying to do this through the viewfinder, so I think I might be better off getting my microscope up. That might be it. I don't really want to keep bending that because I've got a feeling that's just gonna that's just gonna break. So just cut it here. No, that's off. No, that hasn't worked. Right, the problem I've got there is I think it's very close to the wire. 
on this side here. So I'm just going to use my tweezers and my eye loop and see if I can get it away. No, I've broken it off again. Right, I'm wiggling it this time so it looks like it has stuck. I just need to look closely and see if it's shortened against the ground next to it. There we go. Well, as far as I can see, that looks like it's stuck and it doesn't look like it's shortened next to the tiny little via next to it. So this is the thing I need to stay away from, that tiny little thing there. So now let's get the multimeter and let's see what it's doing now. Excellent, look, it's going through to pin three now, the burnt one. And it wasn't going there before. Right, so I won't put any uh, solder mask on that yet. Let's get this back together, and now let's see if we have a backlight. Because this switch might have multiple other faults, but we'll uh, let's see now, because that, you know, that, that's testing different than it was before, so hopefully it might do something different. happy with the way this how the screen connector went in it's on that burnt pin there it seems to be pivoting
Right, that's back enough to test. So let's see now what's going to happen. See if we have any backlight. So tap it on. Right, it's not even so Oh, here we go. Yes! Nintendo! Yes! Come on, come on, do more. Look at that. Look at that! Oh, you beauty! Yes! Fortnite, Minecraft, YouTube. The Incredibles. Tetris. What an absolute... Results, so it was that track that had gone. Oh, brilliant. Oh, so happy with that. So, uh, £200 for both of them, and uh, so that means £100. So, a Nintendo Switch Lite for £100 is pretty good. Now, it looks like there's some scratches and stuff up here on the screen. Are they going to come off? Don't think so. Brilliant. Do you know what? I didn't think that was going to come on Come on at one stage there. Results. So it was that backlight. The backlight wasn't working because it looked like there was three wires going up to it, wasn't there? Was there three wires? And uh, one of them was completely gone. So there's actually, there was four contacts on there, but one of, the, one of them's a ground. Uh, yeah, four contacts. One's a ground. And there's three coming up from here. Yeah, so the only thing it's missing is that tiny capacitor. I'm going to leave that because I think that is just to do with uh, cleaning up the signal. If you know otherwise, put it down in the comments if you think that I should try to unsolder one of the other ones, get a reading from it, and then, you know, a capacitor like that is only going to be pennies. The problem is they're so small. Uh, I can't stress how small these things are. So that wire that you've seen probably looked pretty big on the camera because I was zoomed in, but it's 0.1 millimetres. That's thinner than a human hair. So that's why it's so hard to do any sort of soldering or work when you're dealing with things that are so, so small. Even a tip on the soldering iron, you can see how small that tip is, but it looks massive when you're zoomed right in. But that is a small tip. Yeah, uh, I'm well happy with that. So let's get it back together. And I'm gonna put a bit of UV mask on that little bit there. So now let's hold it down. Shut it off properly. Excellent. So I'm going to get a little bit of UV mask on that and uh, put all the other screws and stuff in. In fact, I can do that. I don't have to take it apart. I can, uh, I can do that because I can get to that bit there. Oh, I'm well happy with that. Well happy with that. Really am. change over the thermal paste make sure I've put on absolutely loads just to get all the comments in <laughs> this is non-conductive so apart from the fact that you're wasting your money by putting on loads, it won't cause any uh, any issues. Now, I'm only changing the thermal paste from there to the heat pipe because I think that's the most important one. This other thermal paste looks different. It's like a thicker thermal paste to get a bit of heat out onto here. So I'm gonna leave that because remember, this isn't an old system anyway. So it's not exactly as if the thermal paste is uh, gonna be really off. But saying that, it has been damaged in water. I'm just wondering what the point of having the thicker stuff is because my stuff's quite runny so I'm going to leave it because uh, Nintendo obviously put two on for a reason unless it is just to save money maybe the thicker stuff is cheaper right so what I'm going to do now is get some UV 
solder mask, put a dot on here to stop it corroding away, and uh, uh, yeah, that's it, just clean it all up then. So this is the stuff that I'm going to use here, UV solder mask. Here we go, that's all I need. As you can see, I've just put a tiny, tiny bit on there. Now, just before I cure it, I am just going to tap it on just to make sure that the screen's still working. Yes, it is. Right, so I'm just going to leave that now and uh, leave this on it for a bit and let it cure. It's probably going to take a good 10 minutes or so. There's only a very thin layer, so uh, hopefully that'll be rock hard after that. Just as I'm waiting for that to dry, that was the list in there. You can see there, two times Nintendo Switch handheld tablet console, 40 spares, repairs, job lot, £199. And it wasn't a bid, that was a buy it now. And that was the write-up. I won't read it all out, but it just says, these have been tested and both turn on and charge normally. The digitizer and controls do seem to work as sounds are made when attempting to navigate the menus when using touch or through the joysticks, but there is no display output. That is the extent of the testing. I was not able to carry out further due to the lack of display. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's gone hard now. So when you tap it, it feels solid. So let's put this back on. Just going to try to straighten this up a little bit. So there you have it, nice and clean. It's still a new console, so it's not going to really be have years and years of grime on it. But it has got annoying bashes up here on the digitizer. But that shouldn't affect it. We can quickly check that anyway. That shouldn't affect the actual touch screen. Right, so let's pop a game in. Make sure the game card reader is working. Excellent, so that's working. Let's go to settings. Let's go down to controllers and sensors and test input devices, test touch screen. Let's go up to where the damage is up here. Yeah, that's fine. So it's all working. When you go off the screen, it resets itself, you see. Well happy with that, really happy. So obviously I've got to check the Wi-Fi, I've got to check the SD card reader. Let's just make sure there's no drift on the analog sticks. Actually, let's quickly check the buttons. All right, so that's all working. Right, well they're centering and they're working as analog. So that appears to be okay. Let's uh, do this one. Again, it's not gonna have had a huge amount of use, is it? So it was probably dropped down a toilet or into a bath or something like that. Or maybe it was left outside or something leaked in a bag. It didn't look bad. I think with this one here, I don't reckon it was a part before because if it was a part before, uh, somebody would have cleaned it with IPA. I think that was genuine. So I'm really, really excited to do this one now. Really, I'm gonna go to bed. I'm gonna wake up first thing in the morning. I'm gonna start working on this one here. So I'm well happy with this one. Really, really happy. One of my favorite videos. I love doing this one. I love it when you find a fault and then you fix it and it just works perfectly. Just that tiny, you've seen how thin it was, that tiny, tiny track stops it from working because the backlight, it didn't light up. So if I was to shine a torch, you probably could have seen something happening up on screen. So I'm really excited now to see whether this is gonna be water damage or what the problem is. But at least now, I've uh, got a little bit of a better idea of how that backlight 
works up on that right hand side. So happy with this one. So uh, yeah, that is it for this video. Obviously if something like the Wi-Fi is not working or if the NFC is not working or something else, then that can be a nice revisit video as a separate video. So uh, yeah, but I reckon it's all going to be fine. So that is it. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. And I will see you soon. And in the meantime, I hope you all stay safe. Bye now.